I'm Taria Shantor, and we are pursuing what we have already expounded as a most basic urge and need and actually inspiration in all of us, namely to find meaning in life. Now, we are coming to the paradox of what Frankl said um, is the tragic triad of human existence. And with his very um, provocative saying that if we take those tragedies out of life, we will actually destroy its meaning. He provoked us by saying, who of us can say, we will never suffer, we will never make a mistake, never fail, and we will never die. Because all of us seem to be reaching out to the good life. And as I have wanted to expound, indeed, we are to find the good life. But there is a process to get towards it. A potential must be made a reality. What we sense is what we eventually need, is something we have to achieve. And to achieve it, we've got to go through some paradoxical experiences. The experience, a very paradoxical experience to a sense of meaning in life, is to suffer pain. You know, it's like a child being born with this wide, uh, open-eyed delight in coming into the world with inquisitive and an explorative inspiration to get involved in it. It's almost the child is like an open book. But what impressions can be made on that little mind when there is rejection, when he's not always met in his needs and so, throughout all our lives, when we have disappointments and disillusionments and when we are thrown into confusion and insecurity, what about all of those things? And let us explore it, therefore, um, in, in greater depth. And I want to do it, actually, through the story of Viktor Frankl. When he was a little boy, he said in his um, autobiography, um, the last that he wrote about his life, uh, he said he woke up, or rather, he, it was one dark night that he, just before falling asleep, had this rather unnerving question coming to him. What is the meaning of life in the face of death? Because he realized, that, you know, one day I too will have to die. So what's the point of living if in the end I die? Falling asleep with this question, it wasn't long afterwards, he, he wrote, that he woke up. Now look at the analogy. One sunny morning, not a dark night, going into the darkness of suffering and confusion but having the light of a dawning realization when he woke up, not quite opening his eyes, but having a rapturous sense of being looked after, of being embraced by, um, of being in the presence of. And he opened his eyes and there was his father standing over him and smiling. And the realization that hit home to him as a little boy is there is meaning in life. And I am meant to find it, despite the tragic triad of having to suffer pain, of having to face the fact of death. And, you know, and, oh, in my search and confusion, making so many mistakes, Mistakes, things that I regret and wish I hadn't done. But all of those things have meaning, Frankel said. Now, just to, before I tell you his story, to illustrate this, let's just look briefly at what he said, the meaning of these tragic uh, triad of human existence really is. Death. See, death is to make you aware of the preciousness of life. That life is not just going on and on and on. It's got a limit. 
What does that mean? Time is a God-given opportunity to cease it. You know, not to put things off, not do them. We'll see that prime living is to be in every moment as precious and to respond to in the right way. So this is the meaning of death, to make life a precious, once-given opportunity. And what about, what about uh, suffering at um, the, what is so part and parcel of our living, our fallibilities, that we make mistakes, that we do fail? Frankl said, you know, it is in failure that we learn actually what should have been done. We've got a sense of guilt that makes us feel, you know, that wasn't right, that I shouldn't have done. Well, what does it tell you on the other side? Well, this is what I should have done. And so failure is a tremendously a powerful source of teaching, of learning. And he said, therefore, that we should live our lives as if we're living it a second time and we're about to make the same mistake we did the first time. So we can see that actually what is happening is a growing awareness of responsibility of what it is we should be and this is the meaning of suffering when sudden tragedy strikes us something we didn't bring about ourselves something that that we didn't deserve that just happens to us like a tragic illness that can befall us or the death of a loved one whatever it is there's something we have unavoidable suffering he he calls it what does it do to us you know, what is it, what it evokes in us is a why. Why did it happen? Why did it happen to me? What is the reason? How must I understand this? But that, you see, he said, suffering corners us with these questions. And you know, it was said of Job that God said to him, I will question you and you shall answer me. Our lives are meant to be answerable lives, accountable lives. So we are called to give answers to the questions it poses. And, you know, this is what suffering does. It corners us. It makes us question. Look at the book of Job. It's one long complaint and struggle to find meaning, like a Jacob struggle with the angel of death. And he said, I will not let you go until I understand this until you bless me, because understanding is blessing, because this is what Frankel said, if, uh, if, su if suffering makes us aware of what ought not to be, what we don't want in our lives, who wants this? It's, it's you know, suffering in itself, Frankel said, is meaningless. The meaning of suffering is that it makes us aware of what ought not to be, and therefore makes us aware of what ought to be. And it challenges us us with saying, I will not have any part in suffering. I will combat it and I will refute what is wrong in life by choosing to relieve suffering, to have compassion, to reach out to, to bring people. You know, it's actually like suffering is a call. Adam, where are you? Come out. And you know, this is this is where, and actually as Frankel described it, um, and as I have ex uh, researched it with, in the lives of Holocaust survivors, that it actually brings out what is called the defiant power of the human spirit. Because you see what suffering can do to us, and now I just want to quickly and briefly take up the story of Viktor Frankl, is that it makes it... It, it quells our lives, it diminishes us, it makes us cower, it makes us hide away, it, it fills us with fear and terror. And, and actually, and then we don't step out into life, but if we can step out into life defiantly, despite the suffering, say, even though I don't understand it, I will still live a life of what I believe are the true values and what I feel um, makes sense to me. And even though I will have to live with what I cannot explain. But you know, 
sometimes the understanding does break through and we can see that, it, that suffering actually challenges us to come to the point of saying, here I am, despite what happened to me. Um, and actually I can look back at what happened to me as something that made me more aware of what I should be and therefore I'm coming out more committedly myself than before I suffered. Every single client and student that I have had in logotherapy will tell you the story that they're actually glad that they have suffered because it forced them into coming to real answers to a much greater awareness of what should be in the face of what shouldn't be.